Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here. Today I'm back for episode number two of my New York Mets Dynasty here on Out of the Park Baseball 19. So today we are back with the mid-season update for 2018. A couple things I want to address before we get into it. So uh, someone mentioned to me that the Mets head scout in this game is pretty poor and that I should hire a new one. And I did that just in time for the first year player draft. And uh, that was the correct assessment because my head scout was uh, poor reputation, and I think he was below average in all of the scouting areas. So I hired this guy, RJ Harrison, who was pretty much one of the best American scouts that I could get. Uh, he is pretty old, 64, so he's probably going to retire in the near future, but that's fine. He'll be a good temporary uh, fill-in for us, and I gave him a big five-year contract because I needed him to accept right away, so I would have him for the first-year player draft. A um, couple other things I wanted to address, the comments I got or the feedback I got back for enabling the DH were pretty mixed so I think I'm going to just hold off on doing that for at least the first few seasons maybe come back to it or circle back to it um, in the future a couple seasons down the road but for now we're going to keep the NL uh, as no DH um, and then another thing I wanted to mention was a lot of people express some interest in or I should say a few people express interest in uh, me sh <coughs> showing off the Oakland A's save that I have going um, kind of as I did with the Red Sox save that I had that was like 50 seasons in or something like that way back when. This one is not nearly as expansive. It's only like five seasons in. <laughs> so uh, probably not as interesting to show off. But I'm still happy to uh, kind of go through it, show the progress and how the team has evolved. I have won a World Series with them, and I think I've made the playoffs every season. So it's been a pretty successful uh, dynasty. But anyway, so if enough people want to see that, I can certainly make a video for that. And the last thing was I got some feedback. I I got one comment in particular about um, generating the uh, international free agents, and I honestly don't even remember what screen that, what setting that is under. Yes, international, or no, here it is, international free agents. So you see, like, 1% from random origin, I guess that means 99% are going to be from um, Taiwan. So I think my solution for this is going to be to just lower the number of international free agents to 5, because... Enabling the other leagues, uh, like the KBO and the NPB, the Japanese and Korean uh, leagues, and kind of allowing the uh, posting system to be uh, like populated by more than a few players is kind of substitutes the need for having these generated international free agents. So um, I'll just keep a few of them around, but I'm going to lower the number from 10 to 5. And that is that. So since the last episode, we've played four games, and we've actually won all four. We just swept... The Chicago Cubs. Let's do schedule actually to show this off. As you can see, we had a four game set. It actually goes back to May. And we won all four games. So we continue to play really good baseball. We had a very good May. Look at this. Wow. We only lost two, five, six, seven games out of. Let's see how many off days we had. Four. So 20, 27 games. I think we went something like 20 and 7 in May, which is pretty good, obviously. And our run differential is not that good, so it could be a little bit of um, good luck. But I guess that bodes well for our manager, Mickey Calloway, and how he is doing, or at least how he is managing our bullpen. We've gotten pretty good production out of a few guys in our bullpen. Not so much Anthony Swarzak, but we're pretty close to getting Familia back. Only four more days, so that should help. And let's take care of the first-year player draft. We have the sixth overall pick after only winning 69 games last year, I believe, or 70 games, one of the two. So we could get a pretty good player here with this sixth overall pick. And let's sort by potential. One thing I've been doing more in this game is focusing on the potential of actual, like certain ratings more than just you know overall potential. Let's do all players. And we are looking at offensive ratings right now. So like this guy, Xavier Edwards, he has a really good offensive profile, I think, with those numbers. Um... Who else? Nick Madrigal is available. He would be another good pick. I think he went second overall in the actual draft to the White Sox, I want to say. Uh, Nick Decker was a pick from the Red Sox. Alec Thomas looks like he's got a pretty good offensive profile. Um, who else? This guy's not bad. Let's look at Power. Power, I think, is maybe the best uh, offensive rating to have in this game because it seems like... Guys can be effective players just having good power ratings, but can't really be effective players just having good anything else, per se. And I always like avoid Ks as well. 
Um, so I'm liking Xavier Edwards. He doesn't have a huge uh, power potential, but he looks like he could be a, up, a nice up-the-middle player for us. Uh, good contact bat. Looks like at pitching potential as well. And just see if there are any good starters. Looks like this guy might be the best available guy, honestly. Looks like our, our scout certainly thinks he could be a stud. And honestly, if I... Scouting, yeah. Scouting director recommendation is him. I think I lean towards him, quite honestly, because if he is this player, then he is going to be an absolute stud and future ace for us. Um, and he definitely is better than any of the other pitchers we could get. So I think we'll go with him. Sixth overall pick, and his potential is fitting of a um, sixth overall pick. So we will go with him, and then picking in the second round. This guy, ooh, this guy is also a starter, actually. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Our guy thinks he can be a starter. He is a... Looks like a high school guy who wants to go to college, though. So he will be around for the next few rounds. Let's go back to batting potential. Um, still some decent guys. Still Nick Decker available. Uh, I doubt Xavier Edwards is still around. Yep. This is actually... Is this all players? So, yeah. Pretty much most of the good players got picked in that first r couple rounds. Tristan Casas, I've seen him turn into a pretty good player in this game. Uh, he was the Red Sox first round pick this past year. Um, what does our scouting director think? Victor Vodnik. Hmm, I don't really like that this guy's movement rating is so bad. Um, but we'll go with him. His other ratings were pretty good, so maybe he can uh, fill out a little bit. And as for our next pick, I kind of want to go with a bat, just because we haven't gotten one yet. Um, drafting is really something I'm not very good at in this year's OTP, so... I don't know if uh, you guys have any tips for me, but... Yeah, like I said, this is definitely not my strong suit in this year's game. This guy would be good, but he is... Uh, He's another guy who's going to be looking for something well above the slot demand. Our scouting director wants us to go with Zach Cohn, third baseman. I think I'd rather get Brian Hernandez. I want to take a shot on this guy. See if we can get him, uh, pay him more than the slot, obviously, and try to sign him up. Um, still wants us to go with Zach Cohn. I'll do that. I'll go with the scouting director. I do default to the scouting director recommendation. Um quite a bit when drafting. I like this guy, but he is another uh, impossible signee. We do have um, a good amount of draft budgets, so we can afford to draft a few guys like that. This guy looks like he'd be solid too. He's a slot, slot projected. What does our scouting director say? Luis Brian Lopez, up the middle player. Um, I'd kind of rather go with the catcher, to be honest. I think. Ooh, Drevian, Drevian Nelson, maybe. Because I know he can really play some center field. I think we'll go with Drevian Nelson. Because I know he develops into a good center fielder. Uh, Trent Shelton. Decent pitcher. Slot could be... Could be a nice little arm for us, and he's already 23, so it could be immediate help. Um, I'm going to go with Keegan Fish next, because I want him. And Jaron Duran, this guy is supposed to be really fast. This is another Red Sox drafty. He has, like, freakish speed from what the scouts say. They want us to go with Ross Massey. Fine with that. Decent pitcher. Um, do we want to take a chance on one of these relievers? I kind of like this Saul Gonzalez guy, so I'm going to go with him. Maybe overpay for him. This is another potential starter. I like him. And keep going. Not really too many decent bats left. Um, I might just start simming the rest of this. Let's see if we can find any other any other guys that are worth taking or that are worth targeting. Well, I kind of like this guy. Pablo O'Connor. Go with him. And we're pretty much down to 
the bottom of the barrel. So I think I will auto draft the rest of this. Complete draft. But I like that guy. We got sixth overall. I'm hoping. I mean, if he if he really has as good a potential as our scout thinks, then he could be something else for us. Could be our ace of the future. But like I said, drafting is kind of something I'm, I struggle with. I'm a lot better with the trades in this game and identifying the right kind of free agents. Um, let's negotiate. So we have a couple guys who had big demands. Brian Hernandez looking for probably like $4 million we'd have to offer him. We still have a lot of budget room left, though. Keegan Fish is looking for probably something similar, like $4 million. And Saul Gonzalez... Probably something similar. So, I mean, we could offer $4 million to each of those guys. But I kind of like this guy, too. Jason Schroeder. He's not looking for nearly as much. Um, Alright, well... Mm, I do like Vodnik's potential. Let's... Oh, no, we already have Vodnik. Hernandez is the guy. So, I think I'm going to pass on Hernandez because we'll get a compensation pick for him. Fish is a catcher, so I kind of want to get him. We'll offer him 4.5... And I want to get this Jason Schroeder guy. We'll give him 3. Actually, we'll go 3.5. And then maybe we'll do 4.5 for Saul Gonzalez. And alright, um, I'm going to skip forward to July 2nd or July 1st. And we will see if we can continue to play some very good baseball. So we got another round of uh, World Baseball Classic offers. Oh, we got Schroeder. Nice. We did not get Keegan Fish. He uh, he was not satisfied with our offer. Um, so I guess <laughs> maybe I should do the Netherlands. The Netherlands are always kind of a fun team. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna accept the uh the U.S. one. Screw it. And that will come around not for another couple of years, so we won't have to really worry about this for a little while. But and so Adrian Gonzalez made it through waivers and did not get claimed. And he has zero days left on DFA. He will not be demoted, so we're going to have to release him. That is just fine. And we DFA'd Matt Dendecker. We're, we can send him back to AAA, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, I don't think he has enough service time to refuse his assignment. Uh, once we got Chad Frazier back, I DFA'd Dendecker. We just got Familia back. Um, and I want to keep... I'm keeping Chikini at the uh, Major League level because he's... Well, a pretty small sample, but... Just based on his ratings, I feel like he should be at the Major League level. I would DFA Reyes, but he's actually playing really well for us. He's on pace for like a three and a half one season, and in particularly of late, he has been really good. He's raised his OPS. Well, actually, not even. It's been pretty much all year, so. Uh, definitely not going to get rid of him if he keeps performing. Um, so we got Frazier back. They're still playing Flores every day. I guess I should uh, reset his game strategy. And who else do we have locked in a position? It's just Conforto. That's fine. Conforto starting to heat up. This is this is good because Conforto got off to a cold, bit of a cold start for us. But he is starting to hit the crap out of the ball. And he has really good ratings. So he's going to be someone I'm hoping to kind of build around based on his offensive ratings. Um, and we just got Familia back. So we'll have to get rid of one of our arms. Could be Jason Vargas to be honest because he's so bad. Although, he's actually got two and a half star rating as a reliever. Um, so maybe it'll be Seth Lugo. Uh, let's look at the FIP, actually. Suarez X been bad. Lugo has been pretty bad. Gives up a lot of home runs. So we'll do Lugo down to AAA in favor of activating Familia. And Saul Gonzalez did not sign with us. So we have some more room in our budget to offer Hernandez. So I'm going to offer him 4.5. See if he takes that, since we did not get Fish or Gonzalez. So we just got Syndergaard back off the DL. That is good news. We've kind of uh, tailed off a little bit. We're 38 and 34 right now. Um, and I think we'll just send out Marcos Molina. He hadn't really shown us anything uh, to make me want to keep him around. So we'll activate Syndergaard. And he should be getting the nod for this upcoming game against Colorado. So Jay Bruce continues to be pretty upset with his role on this team, and I just don't really have a spot for him. I want to keep playing Cespedes and Conforto at the corners. I guess I could play Conforto in center, since we're just playing Lagares there right now. But Lagares, he provides good defense, and he's been only slightly below league average as a hitter so far, so I'm not really sure Bruce would 
help improve that. And the Bruce contract, I would love to get out from under. So I'm going to shop him around. I doubt I'll really be able to dump his contract completely. But who knows? Maybe we'll get an offer that is worth taking. And as I suspected, these offers are all pretty much guys who have big contracts. And I don't think any of these are really worth taking. Um, so I think we're just going to have to hang on to him for now. Unless any of these contracts expires after this year, but I don't think so. No way Thomas takes that opt-out. Kennedy, he's under contract for two more years, and we don't really need the pitching. Ellsbury's got a few more years left. And Bruce makes less money than pretty much all these guys, so... Yeah, I'm just going to have to hold on to him for now. One thing I will do is uh, get rid of this lock on Conforto. And see if maybe the game puts him in center more or... Nope. But it might switch up. The um, one thing I realized is that the lineups do switch around a lot depending on how how guys are performing. So if Ligaris cools off, maybe Callaway will put Conforto in center and Bruce in right. And we just lost Ezdrubal Cabrera for 45 weeks. That's kind of a blow because he had been playing pretty well. He was on pace for like a four-win season, four-and-a-half win season. So this is a tough loss for us. We're definitely going to miss him. Um, we can call up... TJ Rivera, though, who just got healthy. Ooh, Jamie Callahan in AAA now. If he keeps pitching well, he's definitely going to get called up this year. Um, or we could bring back Ahmed Rosario and play him at shortstop. Let's do that, actually. I'd rather give Rosario another shot. I know his ratings are not the best right now, but he does have two stars. And usually if a guy has two stars, he's probably about ready to get a shot in the MLB. So we'll call him back up, see if he can get hot. And if not, we have TJ Rivera down in AAA we could go to. And we also got Brandon Nemo back, which means we have even less room for Jay Bruce on this roster. I'm really tempted to waive Bruce, and I doubt he's going to get claimed, but I'm very, very tempted. I guess we could just send down Chikini, since Ray seems like he's assuming that backup uh, infielder role. And, yeah, we have Ligaris and Reyes on the bench now, along with Bruce and Ploiecki. That's fine. And it looks like we were able to sign our third-round draft pick. Um, I forget his name already. Uh, Hernandez, the center fielder, I believe he was, uh, because he's not on the screen anymore. So Fish and Gonzalez are the guys we end up not signing, which is just fine. So we're just a couple days ahead of the international free agent signing period, which is basically what I was eyeing um let's take a look at how fred wilpon thinks we're doing i think he's pretty pleased with our team record we haven't upgraded that shortstop and we have not extended a familia or acquired a nationally popular player he's been ecstatic with our progress though so that's fine looks like we are doing just fine in that regard uh expiring contract info this hitting coach um I'm not really, well, yeah, we're tied for seventh in runs. I'm probably not going to extend him and try to get a better hitting coach in the offseason then. So we got a couple more days here before the international free agent signing period begins, which is what we are going to eye and try to sign a future stud. So let's sim a couple more games against Miami here. As you can see, 13 and a half games back despite being six over 500. So Washington is still playing at a pretty uh, severe pace. They're 56 and 24. They've actually cooled off a little bit. Losers of four straight, but still playing 700 baseball. Best record in the league. Actually, LA is the best record in the league by a half game. They've won 14 straight. Wow. So LA is really taking off. Um, but we are still in contention for that wild card spot. Looks like Arizona has the first wild card, and we have the second right now. As we're beating up on Miami this series, they are losers of six straight. We've actually won five in a row. So starting to get back to playing some winning baseball. But our run differential is still not that good. Um, it's probably not that much worse than our record indicates. But I always think run differential is a little bit, a little bit of a better indicator of true team performance. But we just swept Miami. So that's good. We're back to nine games over 500. And... Yeah, Pythagorean win-loss is 44 and 39, so it's not that far off from our actual win-loss. Um, let's look at international amateurs. So, according to our scout, there's really only one guy worth going all, out, going all out for, and it is Marco Luciano. Carlos Aguilar, also not bad. Uh, but other than that, 
Yeah, this is all players. So we'll go after Luciano. We're going to offer him 5 million. Usually if you offer someone 5 million in this, they will take it. And 5 million is the max. That's as much um, as you can spend on international amateur free agents. It is the cap. So we will offer him that. And whether he works out or not, it's just the only opportunity cost is not signing one of these other guys. But that's totally fine. In my A's one, I signed Hector Lu Lucero. Lucero. Because he was rated five stars, but he turned out to be a bust. So we'll go with Luciano, see if that works out for us. And we did get Luciano to sign. Good for us. So hopefully he turns into our shortstop of the future. His defensive ratings are decent, so he could he could stick at shortstop. If not, maybe moves to second base. He doesn't have the best arm. But, man, if he really has something close to 80 home run power, he's definitely going to be a player for us down the road. Ahmed Rosario really continuing to struggle here, but I think I'm going to stick with him because his ratings have filled out a little bit, and if he turns into a 65 contact hitter with 70 grade shortstop, he could definitely be our shortstop of the future. I mean, that's a, that's a real solid player, and I don't know if I touched on this in the last episode, but I really value defense up the middle, and it's really hard to find guys who play good shortstop, play good defensive center field. I mean, even Nemo is really not a true center fielder. He should really be a corner guy. Um, so... I mean, if Rosario fills out, then I'm very happy to call him, you know, shortstop of the future for now. So, we're going to stick with him. So, we are at the All-Star break, and we have continued to play really good baseball. We just took three of four from Washington. We had swept Philly, taken two of three from Tampa, swept Toronto. We, of course, swept Miami early in the month. So, I think we are something like 12-2 and two or something this month. And um, we really grabbed a stranglehold on this wild card. It's us in Arizona and then a pretty significant gap. I mean, we're seven up on St. Louis right now. Uh, so we have a really good gap in the wild card standings and maybe an outside shot at catching Washington. I mean, Washington is really coming back to earth now. And, I mean, think about it. We're seven, and a, we're seven up on St. Louis, who is third in the wild card standings, and we're seven and a half behind Washington. So almost equidistant between those two spots. And let's go look at the schedule because I actually I do want to see what our record is in july so far it's something pretty ridiculous two losses and seven plus four is 11 so 11 and two in the month of july so far we've got the all-star game and we'll take a look at the stats real quick but let's see who made it for us i think i saw Degrom on there yes he did it looks like he might start the all-star game he's having a fantastic season 2.52 era pretty uh, similar to what he's doing in real life i think his era is actually lower than that in real life but anyway uh See if we got anyone else. I would imagine Cespedes, because he's playing pretty well still. Yep. 20 homers. And Conforto. Three win season so far. 140 WRC+. Plus. So I think those are our three All-Star representatives. Probably the only guys who really deserved it. Let's take a look at the stats, though, real quick. We'll sort by war. So, yes, Conforto, Cespedes leading the way. Nemo is having a pretty good year. 1.5 war in only 66 games. Flores hitting the ball, all right, 111 OPS plus. And Dominic Smith starting to come around. This is what I'm glad to see. He had been really struggling out the gate. Um, he was, I think he had something like 17 strikeouts in his first 51 plate appearances, which is right around 33%. But he is really tearing the cover off the ball now, and he's only striking out uh, something like, I don't know, 30 times in his next uh, 150 plate appearances. So that's a much better, much, much better number for us, and he's... Hitting the ball really well, so I'm glad to see that. I'm sure his BABIP, yeah, his BABIP is 446, so he's definitely not going to hit 350 all year, but we will uh, we will continue to take it as long as it lasts. Rosario, looks like his OPS has gone up a little bit, so maybe uh, coming off a two-hit game, he's got a little four-game hit streak, so maybe he's coming around a little bit. That's good to see. Bruce still very pissed off at us. <laughs> he's actually, his morale is fine, though, so it's not really... Probably not disrupting the clubhouse or anything. Um, and pitching-wise, we've got Syndergaard and DeGrom leading the way. Harvey and Willer still having solid years, and Matt's not so much. Bullpen, the bullpen is still, we're not getting anything out of Familiar or, or uh, Swarzak. And Blevins has really had a bad month and a half or so, because he, he started out the year really well, but not so much as of late. Still, all of our middle relief guys are having pretty good years. So... Yeah, right now it's looking like, I mean, we're going to be kind of in the thick of it for the wild card, and, I mean, there's no reason we would be sellers at this point. I don't think I'm going to, I don't, you know, the thing I, I want to be careful about is 
selling out too much for this team because I'm still not a huge believer that this is really a World Series contender based on our group of position players because we don't really have too many studs. This kind of reminds me of my first year with the Oakland A's playing in that save where I made the wild card. I think I lost in the wild card game and it really felt like we had overachieved the whole year. So I think I'm going to, and in, in that season, I just remember for the trade deadline, I went after rentals and kind of just cheap acquisitions that would sort of help plug in holes on the roster, but weren't really any long-term investments or anything. Um, I mean, if we can find a good deal for like a, a controllable bat or a controllable uh, pitcher, then, you know, certainly we'll go after that. But I think I'm not going to go too crazy trying to add to this team. But still, I mean, you have to be pleased with that. The season's gone so far for us. So we just lost 2-3 to the Yankees, and we lose Jerry Blevins for about a week. I'm going to put him on the DL. And Matt's is also day-to-day -day for five days. I think I'm just going to throw him on the DL, honestly. Because I don't want to have to start someone on short rest. And I'll just give Molina a start in his place. Um, Matt Harvey expressing some interest in re-signing. He's having a decent year, 122 ERA plus, And he actually doesn't want a lot of money. Only two years, 12 million. So I'm kind of tempted to extend him because if we let him walk, we don't really have an in-house replacement for him unless uh, Molina you know, really shows us something. The rest of the season, we do have P.J. Conlin, but I don't really think he's going to be anything special. So we're going to call up Callahan for now. And who's doing better, Conlin or Molina? Uh, Molina's kind of struggling. Let's go with Conlin, actually. We're going to give him a start in place of uh, in place of Matt's for this weekend. We'll give Callahan his first taste of the big league, see what he can do in this role. His uh, control is all the way up to 45, so he seems like he's about ready to go. At least according to our head scout it is. But he seems like he's ready to go for the major league, so we're going to give him a shot.